Did you know? The original arcade cabinet of Punch-Out! was created partially as a method of utilizing excess televisions. After a major success with Donkey Kong, Nintendo ordered monitors in excess of their sales, leading to an overstock. When asked about the surplus TVs, Nintendo's general hardware manager Genyo Takeda stated, The televisions weren't being used. Tons of them were in our Uji plant, so we were given this proposition. Create a new arcade game that uses two televisions. Two televisions could use up more stock than one. Originally, Nintendo proposed the creation of a racing game that used both monitors, but the chip could only handle one image being enlarged at a time. Realizing this, Takeda suggested the effect could be used on a single person. This led to the idea of a boxing game and ultimately, Punch-Out! When talking about how they would handle the two television setup, General Manager of Nintendo Shigeru Miyamoto stated, We were stuck for a little bit by that, but then we thought that a boxing arena has big lights and banners hanging from the ceiling with things like World Heavyweight Title Match written on them. This would have a lot of meters as well, so we thought maybe having two screens would be more fun, and we tried stacking two screens vertically. It felt good, so we decided to use that two screen setup. Punch-Out! was a roaring success, and demand for the game was so high that a sequel was pushed out the following year, titled Super Punch-Out! A spin-off by the same development team named Arm Wrestling also appeared exclusively in the North American market. The same dual monitor setup was used, and like Punch-Out!, Arm Wrestling contained very eccentric opponents. Arm Wrestling's third opponent, Mask X for example, was revealed to be Punch-Out!'s bald bull once defeated. The NES version of Punch-Out! wasn't actually the first to appear on home consoles. In 1985, an unlicensed version of Super Punch-Out! was ported to the ZX Spectrum and the Commodore 64 called Frank Bruno's Boxing. Rather than starring Little Mac, the player assumed control of popular English boxer Frank Bruno. Of the eight opponents you could face, only three appeared from the arcade version of Super Punch-Out. However, all their names were changed. Dragon Chan was renamed Fling Long Chop, Bear Hugger was given the name Canadian Crusher, and Vodka Trokensky was dubbed Andra Puncharadov. When development on the NES port of Punch-Out! began, Takeda realized they'd have to severely downsize the graphics seen in the arcade version to fit into the NES. The NES wouldn't be able to handle the layered characters, so they opted for a shorter playable character, leaving plenty of room to see the opposing boxers. Another side effect of these limitations included the repeated use of graphical character assets. A lot of opponents share similar but recolored body parts, such as Piston Honda and Bald Bull. When reflecting on this, Nintendo's Makoto Wada stated, The memory limit on the NES was severe, so we had to break the pictures into parts and rotate them, or call up these parts partially. But no matter how you looked at the drawn images, the proportions were kind of strange. But when you actually made the move, the moment started looking right. I thought that this is how you make video games. The arcade version of Punch-Out! was notoriously short, so while creating a home version, Takeda wondered if the game's length would suffice. Nintendo focused on making the NES version a bigger overall experience, with gameplay that relied on memorization and learning the game's mechanics. This led to the introduction of specific character tells and instant knockouts. Also new to the port was background music, a password system, and animated cutscenes showing Little Mac training with Doc Lewis. Makoto Wada also drew the sprite for Mario as the referee, which he snuck into the game without permission from Mario's creator, Shigeru Miyamoto. When Wada revealed this information, he also told of a secret way to attack Bald Bull. If the player attacks when a light flashes to the right of the audience, they'll land a body blow. According to Wada, this went undiscovered for 22 years. There are several different variations of Punch-Out! on the NES and the Famicom. In Japan, Punch-Out! was originally a prize for the Second Family Computer Golf Tournament, a Nintendo-sponsored tournament for the NES game, Golf. This version of the game wasn't available to the general public, had a gold cartridge, and lacked the final encounter with Mike Tyson. Shortly after the gold version was released, Nintendo of America founder Minori Arakawa was attending a boxing match with soon-to-be heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. Enamored by his performance, Arakawa reached out to Tyson in hopes of using his name and likeness in the American release of Punch-Out! Tyson's inclusion led to increased sales, as he coincidentally took the heavyweight championship from Trevor Burbick around the same time. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! was such a hit in America that it was eventually given a full retail release in Japan. 
Although Tyson gave permission to use his likeness, and obviously knew of the game's existence, he had never played the game until a 2013 special on Fox Sports 26 years after Punch-Out's initial release. Mike Tyson would continue to grace the game's box art until licensing agreements expired in 1990. However, it was Nintendo that decided not to renew the license due to a massive upset in a match against James Buster Douglas, who would be the first to knock out previously undefeated champion Tyson. A final version of Punch-Out! was re-released in 1990, replacing the former champion with an original character named Mr. Dream. After the initial success of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out!, a direct sequel made its way into production. The game was originally entitled Mike Tyson's Intergalactic Power Punch and featured Tyson going through space for the purpose of fighting against the best boxers in the universe. However, due to being incarcerated for sexual assault in 1991, Tyson's likeness was taken out of the game completely. Instead, Mike Tyson's Intergalactic Power Punch was renamed Power Punch 2 and saw release in 1992 under a different publisher. This confused consumers as a Power Punch 1 didn't exist. The follow-up to the NES hit Super Punch-Out came out in 1994 in North America and 95 in Europe. However, the game wouldn't see a Japanese release until 1998, well into the life cycle of Nintendo 64. Like the gold version of the original, Super Punch-Out would not receive a retail release, but instead was an early digital release via the Nintendo Power Flash RAM cartridge. Unrelated to the North American magazine, the Nintendo Power was a Japan-only cart for the Super Famicom and Game Boy that would allow users to digitally download games at a cheaper price. Cartridges could be brought to a store that carried the Nintendo Power Copier, where select games were available for download. These carts would typically hold two to three games at a time, but games containing special chips, for example the Super FX chip, could not be copied. This service was discontinued in 2007. The Punch-Out! universe has seen cameos from other Nintendo franchises such as Mario, Luigi, Donkey Kong, and Donkey Kong Jr. all appearing in the audience of the original Punch-Out! One cameo, however, never came to fruition. Princess Peach was actually a planned opponent for Punch-Out! Wii that was dropped because of the possible negative reaction to violence against women. Other popular Nintendo characters were considered to be opponents as well that were dropped in favor of expanding the Punch-Out! world and its characters. Mario didn't return as a referee as developers thought the tune-shaded 3D atmosphere of the game wouldn't be a good fit for the plumber. Several games have also paid homage to Punch-Out! Little Mac appeared in the WarioWare series and the GameCube version of Fight Night Round 2. Little Mac also appears in the Japanese exclusive Wii title Captain Rainbow as a non-playable character. Here he is seen as fairly rotund and the player must undergo a series of missions to help get him back into shape. This pudgy version of Little Mac also happens to make an appearance in the newest Super Smash Bros. as a trophy. That's all for today. Before you go, we'd like you to vote on what you'd like us to cover more of in the future. Another video on Team Fortress 2, or another video on Portal? You can also vote by leaving a comment below. Hi, I'm Matt from the Best Friends I Batsu, and I sure know a whole lot about boxing. In fact, we did a whole week of boxing video games where we literally punched everyone in the world in the face. It was nuts. So just be sure to check out our channel, Super Best Friends Play. Also, you know, why not check out Bokuto No Eruptions channel too? Cause, you know, he's pre he's prettier. He's he's prettier than us. He's a pretty man. Gorgeous. I I love you, Austin. Call me.